Let's take a look at this question here from SCGS. The diagram shows a rhombus ABCD. The point D lies on the y-axis. A and C are 0 0.621 and 41 respectively. Notice that they tell you this is a rhombus. There are many properties that they didn't state inside for you. Let's do it on our own. So we know that rhombus have equal sides. Let's place that in. And second, we can also place the arrow in to indicate they are parallel sides. So we have two pairs of parallel sides. And one more is where you draw the diagonals out, you will get this intersect at 90 degree and they are sharing the common midpoint. Now you have a few ways to do with question part one, which asks you to show the coordinates of D are 0 and 11.5. Now let's look at a question here. There's this one here, D lies on the Y axis. So I know that at D, x is equal to 0. Okay, let me just write down the board here. So now that I know this x equals to 0, if I place in the diagram, I'll notice that I only left with one unknown. So I only need one concept. And I'm going to just use one. Of course, you can still do it with other property. I'm going to just use the distance. So I'm going to use distance of AD will be equals to distance of CD, okay? So okay, we have finished writing distance formula for AD and CD. Let's do simplification. I'm going to square both sides, so square is gone. Let's do this one here. So I have 36 here. And let's square this. I have Y squared minus 42Y plus, let me read here, I have 441 equals to negative 4 square here, I have 16. And squaring this, I have Y squared minus 2Y plus 1. Now, Y square and Y squared, I minus both sides is gone. Let's collect Y on one side. So we'll have 40Y here and moving constant to the left, I'll have 460. Now divide 460 by 40, I will have 11.5. Now I've showed point D, let me just write it again. Point D will be 0, 11.5. Okay, so we've shown for part one. Now let's take a look at part two. We're asked to find area of rhombus A, B, C, D. Now this one here, if you know the symmetry property of rhombus, I'm just going to purely do A, M, D triangle. Then I'm going to multiply by four. So let me find out what the midpoint is first. For part two, I'm doing midpoint using point A and C. So I have six plus four divided by two. Adding the y coordinate, I'll have 21 plus 1 divided by 2. So this one here, I'll be getting 5 and 11. Now I'm going to also show you two methods quickly. First, we're going to use four times of triangle ADM. I'm going to use the formula by writing half, then we'll start labeling the coordinates. So point D just now, I already have this one here. Let me write it down. 0, 11.5. Let's start turning. Anticlockwise, I will go to point M, which is 5, 11. Turning up, point A, 6, 21. Turning back to point D, that's 11. Sorry, 0 and 11.5 here. 4 times half. That's going to be a 2. I'm going to start doing my formula in here. 0, I don't have to write, so I'm going to write this 2 multiplication. Let me check. I just write it as 5 times 21 plus 6 times 11.5. Sentence is going to be minus. Let's do upwards. So I have this, this, and the 0 I don't have to write. So in this case here, I will have 11.5 times 5, and this one, 11 times 6. Okay, now let's click calculator. We'll have 174 minus 123.5 here. So last answer, we'll be having 101 units square. Now I'm going to erase that part here to do an alternative method. Now, the alternative method will be using base and height of the triangle because we have 90 degree there. Let's find out what the base is. So, I'm going to do the M value. 
we use distance formula for 5, 11 and 0, 11.5. This is the base of the triangle. Let's look at the height now, which is m to a. Do another distance formula using point m and point a. So I'll be getting 6 minus 5 square and 21 minus 11 square. All right, next, I'm going to still use this four times of triangle, ADM. I'm going to use four times half of base times height. And I will be getting also 101 units squared. So that's for part two of the question. And I'm going to erase everything so that we can go to point part three of the question. Let's take a look at part 3. A point N lies on AC produced such that area of triangle A and D is 3 times the area of triangle ACD. Now let's put this point N in. N is on AC produced. Let's extend the line from A to C and put a point N there. And let's also complete it as a triangle. And if you remember DB just now, we have the perpendicular there because it's rhombus. And we already have the midpoint there just now. So let me now focus on triangle ACD first. So look at ACD triangle. What you happen to see is that AC is going to be the base of the triangle. All right. And the height of the triangle is going to be DM here. So that's for triangle ACD. And what we see next is that we have triangle A and D. Now let's put a base of triangle A and D in. That's going to be the length from A to the point that we just added just now, which is point N here. All right. And you'll see that they'll be sharing the same height. So let's write that information out. Okay. So we have this triangle A and D for part three. We are given that is three times of. So, 3 times of area of triangle ACD. Now, let's write the formula for area of triangle now. So, let's look at triangle A and D, which is the bigger one. So, we have half times the base going to be from point A to point N. And then the height will be from D to M equals to 3 times of the other triangle ACD. So ACD base is going to be A to C. So I do half times A to C. And they will be sharing the same height, which is D to M. Now let's take a look here. So you notice this half and this half are the same. And the M and the M is the same. So which means A N length must be 3 times of AC length. Now, I want you to also notice that ACN forms a straight line. ACN are collinear. They are collinear points. They are on a straight line. So, I'm going to make use of a very simple method. Let's just write down point A. We have 6, 21. And because we know point C, let me write that down. When point A goes to point C, the coordinate is 4, 1. Now let's write down how much x coordinate has changed. 6 goes to 4, that's a change of negative 2. And how much y coordinate has changed? 21 goes to 1, that's minus 20. So this is when a goes to c, that's the length ac. So a to n is going to be 3 times. So let me write down, if I have point a goes to point N, which we don't know what. Let me write out the change here. So since we know it's going to be this three times, I'm going to take these changes and multiply by three. So what I see is here, the change is going to be negative six. And this change here is going to be negative 60. 
Okay, so I'm going to write down proper working how I get this n. So to get this n value, I'm going to take this 6 and 21. So I do one by one, coordinate of x first, 6 moved by this much. I either write this or if I want to be good, I will just write negative 2 times 3, okay? So I change by negative 2 times 3. Let me put a comma here. And the y coordinate, 21, will move by 3 times of this number here. So I'll have negative 20 times 3. Okay, so let's work that out. So I'll have 0, comma, negative 39. Okay, so this original point is how much it has moved. So it has moved three times of how point A moved to point C over here. So that's all for this question here from SCGS.